Corey, what does this have to do? Why are you even entertaining this, all this political stuff? This is, this is fraught with problems. Well, here's why. I want to say something to, to all of you guys, and I want, to, I want to be crystal clear. Okay? I want you guys to hear what I'm getting ready to say. Um, and this is, this is two hours in. Now we're getting to the point to what we're talking about. Let me drink a, let me drink a little bit of water. This is to my friend Gregory. Uh, this is my friend Sir Rob. This is to everyone else that's going to make a, a comment. This is also to the people that, that support Trump. This is to every single person that's in the chat. And those are going to come back and watch later. We got a problem in the body. And I want you to hear what I'm getting ready to tell you. We have a serious problem in the body. And it was on full display tonight. It was on full display on the on the other channel. It's on full display in our churches. We'll see it in, on, on this coming Sunday and for the next few Sundays. We have a big problem. We have a problem with our pastors. We have a problem with the other elders, deacons. We got a problem in the pulpit. We got a problem in the pews. We have a problem with the choirs. We have the problem, problem with folks that are looking for a church home, folks that do have a church home. We have a problem with everyone by and large that names the name of Christ. We have a huge problem. Can I tell you what the problem is? It is so easy to get people worked up and bothered and angry and defensive and having allegiance over these funky old little political parties. You get bothered, you get upset over someone having the audacity to think differently about you politically, be it Kamala, be it Biden, be it Trump, be it whomever. And we don't have the same sort of veracity when it comes to the scriptures. We don't have the same sort of veracity when it comes to defending the Bible. We don't have the same sort of desire or will to go and share this gospel that's free and easy to someone who doesn't know. Well, you get on a phone call with 56,000 men about Kamala Harris, when was the last time you were on the phone call with 56,000 men or black women or white men or white women or what have you about Christ? I'll wait for you to tell me never because it hadn't. This is our problem in, in America. The reason why the church has become more of a joke than we even know because we don't even stand on what we say we're standing on. We're, n we're not as serious about the gospel as we are about our political parties. Tell me I'm lying. Just go and look at our churches today. I don't care if you are if you're supporting Trump or you're supporting Biden or Harris. If you are in a white, a predominantly white church, and you're saying, um, "Let's go, Brandon," which is horrible to say, or you bring Trump into the to the to the church. I had a problem with that. I have a problem with you doing the same thing for a Democratic leader. The problem is that we care more about the stupid stuff. And I'm not saying that some of the political stuff isn't isn't, isn't real, but we care more about those things. More about who's going to win on, on November, the first Tuesday in November, than about that one Friday 2,000 years ago. We care more about that. Get upset. We want a name call. All this stuff like that. That's a problem. That's a problem. I could care less who you vote for. I, I really could. I, I really could. I do think that you probably ought to, if, if we vote our, if we vote our biblical conscience, we would probably lean towards Trump. But I don't care if you, I said, give me a biblical reason for there was a reason for the biblical reason for Harris or whomever. But in the end, you're going to stand before the Lord and you're going to give account. And I can promise you the Lord is going to come back to this day and said, you had this, you had that, you argued this, you did that, you fought over here, you fought over there, you did the name calling. You didn't want to have a drink or a lunch with your friends because they were for the donkey or they were for the elephant. You foolish Christians, you. I told this story before and I'll say it again. When Joshua, who is God's man, comes before the command of the Lord's army, he asks a question. Who are you for? Are you for us or are you for them? And his response was no. It wasn't opening the question, though. No. I mean, it wasn't closing the question, mister. Not a yes or no question. No. But I am the commander of the Lord's army. The question, Joshua, and I'll kill you right here, even though you are my man, I will kill you right here. The question is, whose side are you on? Are you for the Lord or for someone else? 
If Bell be God, then worship him. If Trump be God, worship him. If Kamala be God, then worship her. But you keep on having these arguments, these little disagreements. That's fine to have the disagreements, whatever. But if, you're, if your allegiance is not in Jesus and what you say, what you do isn't backed up by your allegiance in Jesus, then you are you probably aren't saved, at least not to the degree that you think you are. And the problem is we get more riled up about this. We can get Christians together to have an argument or a fight politically, but we can't get Christians to go out there and stop abortion. We can't get, get Christians to go out there and stop maybe homelessness. We can't get Christians to go out there and go to the prisons. We can't get Christians to go out there and help children that have been hurt. We can't get Christians to go out there and, and, and help uh, women that have been abused. We can't get Christians to go out there and stop all the atrocities. We outnumber a lot of different constituencies and we are weak and feckless. Why? Because we're more political than we are godly. And that's sad.